I wanted to take a little bit of time to talk about a story that really touched me a couple of weeks ago, and 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 I hope you will all enjoy too, to some extent. It, uh, a Canadian soccer star is uh, she was facing really one of the most difficult tests of her life. Former national team goalkeeper Karina LeBlanc, her husband, they welcomed a new baby into their family. Her name's Paris. She's healthy. She's happy. She's very cute. Uh, but after she came back from hospital, LeBlanc was feeling some shortness of breath, and on examination, her doctor said it might be heart failure and she needed to go to the hospital. She was told uh, as well when she was at the hospital that she might have been exposed to COVID-19. So she went home, but she had to be separated from her brand new baby and her husband for a period of 14 days. Home now, um, but self-quarantined in a room where I'm separated from Paris and my husband, so I can't hold her, touch her, put her down for bed at night, which is really difficult for, um, a mom who's just given birth and all the connections and emotions that um, I'm having. And Karina LeBlanc joins me now. Karina, thank you for making the time to talk to us. Thanks for having me. It's hard no. to, it's my first time doing this type of interview uh, <laughs> and just hearing that message already makes me emotional. So I'm gonna try to get through this. <laughs> <laughs> We'll both try and get through it. I should tell people it wasn't that video that I found uplifting. It was the next video you posted when your 14 days were over and you finally got to be with with your daughter. You are you're going you went through something that really a lot of Canadians are going through when they have to be separated from the people um, they love. What what was that like for you? Uh. Um, you know, being an athlete, you think you're mentally strong, and I try to use every single mental strength exercise I've ever learned as an athlete playing for Canada. Um, but it just nothing really prepares you. I don't know if it was the hormones of, of giving birth, but you know, this wasn't a game. This was life and death, and so the fears of like, oh my God, am I? Because at this point, I wasn't a healthy athlete. I was an at-risk um, young woman and because I had heart failure and so many other things. So it was one of those things where I was terrified and then just not being able to hold my baby girl, you know, just whisper to her, touch her. And there's so many times I just wanted to go in the room and just grab and hold her and say, mommy loves me and put her down. But that would have been selfish. So it was one of the most difficult things I'd ever been through. But you know what, at the end of the day, that that time that we got to reconnect was one of the most powerful things. But I mean, it's a scare. I mean, it's real. It, when, when the doctors told me I stayed there two nights in the hospital, going through the heart failure and, and, and the toughness of breathing, and then finally getting out and thinking, ooh, I get to hold my daughter, and then them telling me, you know, you're going to have to be away from her for two weeks. It, it was so real. It was one of those things where you go through the poor me, but then you realize quickly so much of it is how you look at it and your perspective of it. And I think that's what I took from my days of being an athlete is that I needed to see the light at the end of the tunnel. But trust me, it was it was extremely hard. I cried myself to sleep many nights, but then I just, we FaceTimed about 40 times a day. And then we had a, in our, in our, at our place here, we have a little glass door where I could see her. So I'd get to see her through the glass door and hear her speak and cry and just hope that she would remember me after the two weeks, which she did. <laughs> and we're playing that video as you're talking so people can see uh, that, that reunion, which was so intense oh. and, and heartwarming. But yeah. you were, so you were self-isolating in the house. You could hear her crying. You could hear her move around. You could hear your husband. I can't imagine how much more difficult it, it was because you were, you were there oh. and desperate to look after her. Yeah, it was. It's one of those things where I don't know which would have been better to just be away or to. But I loved being able to just hear her sounds, you know, or hear her waking up crying, and and it was one of those things where I felt connected. And I think one of the biggest things being and this, this is my first time being a new mom is I just always wanted to be connected to her. So we were able to have have her come up to the door, and I would see her, and you know, my husband would talk to me, and we would talk to the door, which was. You know, it, I mean, it was better than nothing, but, you know, just to see her facial movements. And that's a great thing of technology today. You could get that through FaceTime, too. I think my husband was like, he did such a great job. He's like, you trust me, right? <laughs> but the first couple days, because our grandparents, or her grandparents, our parents were supposed to come down, too, to the Bahamas, but they weren't able to because 
obviously of COVID and we didn't want them to put, put them in danger. But it was one of those things where just hearing her made me feel connected to her. And it was more for me probably than for her. But the one of the best things was when we were reconnected. And as you said, you, you, you showed the video. I mean, I, I wanted that to be like, a moment of, of people seeing, because so many people supported me through this journey and it was incredible, but I didn't know how I was gonna react. I didn't expect I was gonna cry the whole time, but it was one <laughs> of those things where I said, Did you, do you remember me? And she kind of smirked. And I was like, okay, she remembers me. And it, it, yeah, it was, honestly, I mean, I've played in many big games for our country and, and it was the biggest honor to play for our country. But this was like my greatest honor was just to be reconnected with my daughter and husband and just get to hold her. And yeah, I'm trying not to get emotional. <laughs> no, it's an emotional thing. I get it. Um, how, how are you? You didn't end up getting COVID, uh, even though you had been exposed to it. But what about the heart failure part? How are you doing health wise? Well, that's the thing I still have to, my high blood pressure is not where the doctors want it to be. And it was what happened is that my body didn't realize I gave birth. So it was still doing different things as if I was still pregnant and it wasn't catching up to it. And one of the things was that my body was still swollen. And it's one of, it's it's for women to just know your body and trust your instincts because it was one of the reasons that I went to the hospital or to call the doctors because I was still swollen and most women are swollen after pregnancy. But knowing my body from my days as an athlete, I was like, this isn't right. And so I still have to keep my high blood pressure down because of the medication I'm on, it's not where they want it to be, which is hard because when you have hormones as a pregnant woman, you're you're quite emotional. <laughs> and um, but I, I just it's it's I just hold her, and it's one of the best feelings. And through this whole thing, which I know everyone has their story, I hope that everybody has their version of Paris to to see that light at the end of the tunnel and know it's going to be okay, and just have something that brings that happiness to them because it was a tough two weeks or it was 17 days, including the days in the hospital, but just at the end, I had my happiness. And I hope that everyone in our country can find that moment or that reason to be happy because this is a difficult time, but you know, like, I don't know, find, find, your, find your parents because that's what makes it, that's what allows us to get through it. Karina, thank you so much for making the time to talk to me.